Hi, it's Kernatex here with a new series of videos uh, describing how to build and install Beyond Linux from Scratch 9.1. This first video is just a little introduction into some of the um, issues we need to look at in getting from the basic LFS system into a position where we can actually start building and compiling packages for BLFS. 9.1. Now it's not to say that LFS isn't a complete system, it is a complete system, um, but it's just not fully featured so there are various aspects missing depending on what you want to use it for of course. If you wanted to use LFS for a server of some sort, for example an LFS server, then likely all you need to do is install some packages to allow NFS and that will be it, that's the server complete. You could have a HTTP, HTTP server installed, for example Apache, you could install that software and all its dependencies and again it's complete. What I'm going to be focusing on though is a, a desktop system which is probably what most people would want um, a system to use to be used as. So that includes a GUI, a browser, some office suites um, and some you know other utilities, maybe a graphics package and so on. Um, so what we need to bear in mind with um, Linux from scratch, the way we did Linux from scratch is that it was built from the start of the book, you followed it all the way through to the end and hopefully by the end of it you'd have a working Linux from scratch system. With Beyond Linux from scratch it's a little bit different, you pick what application you want and you follow those instructions and install that package and any dependency it requires. So you can do things out of order, you can jump around say like I need a browser next or I need um, some utilities to connect to the internet or an office package and so on. You can do it in whatever order you want. The only thing is you have to follow the instructions for that, that particular application. So if it says that you need a particular dependency obviously you've got to install that to allow the build to, to run successfully. But Apart from maybe the bit at the beginning, the rest of it you can do in any order. Um, it's, it's up to you. So, as I say, the, the basic LFS 9.1 system is, is just that. It is a very basic system. It's, it's not got a lot of features. It, it does basic Linux stuff. It's got basic packages on there. Um, but unless you're doing, you know, sort of day-to-day -day stuff is, is not going to be, sorry, unless you're doing some very esoteric stuff, if you want to do day-to-day -day stuff it's, it's not adequate enough for, for our needs. And for example there's no GUI as I've already said, there's no browser, no mouse, so there's no cutting and pasting or anything like that. Now this is an issue for us where previously in Linux from scratch we had a terminal up and a browser up and it was quite easy just to copy commands from the browser and paste them into the terminal. If you finish the Linux from scratch uh, system you'll know that all you've got when you log in is a console, a, a text-based console. You've got no graphics whatsoever, there's no mouse ability to copy and paste and certainly there's no browser at all either. So you can see the issue we've got here. How do we build upon this basic system to uh, turn it into something much easier to use? Um, oh, the, yes, there's another thing there. There's no high-level tools to fetch packages from the internet even, so we can't just, you know, get a browser up and download a file or there's there's no default program to go and get a file from anywhere on the internet. It's, it's, it's not even got that ability. So we've got several options to get around these problems. And the first option involves booting our Linux from scratch 9.1, identifying the packages we need or we want to install and download them to USB or a CD or a DVD disk, um, which we can then mount in the Linux from scratch system and we use instructions that we've printed out from the Linux from scratch or beyond the Linux from scratch website and we just go through and type all the commands in manually and extract the packages from the archive that we've created on the USB or CD or DVD. Now 
of course you can imagine there's going to be a few problems with that um it's a very good chance that we'll miss out on a package of a, a dependency we'll need so that would mean that would entail either reburning a new cd or dvd or unmounting the usb and getting it on another machine and i'm assuming here we've just got this one machine as we as i did on the linux from scratch video it's just a single machine originally had windows on it we've now installed linux from scratch it's not going to be easy to you know shut shut it all down reboot into windows download this files put them back on the usb or the cd and so on it'll be extremely inconvenient and, and there will be a good chance that we would miss something and of course printing instructions are wasteful why do you need to print out on paper wasting ink and paper and so on and last of all um typing in instructions manually is error prone some of the commands are quite uh, unusual lots of characters and symbols and so on so there's a huge opportunity for making a mistake and typing just one character can either render the command useless or worse perhaps worse um, the command will run but it will just do the wrong thing so that's that's the first option the second option is to use our Linux from scratch as we did when we were building it up and that would be to boot a host Linux and troot into Linux from scratch and then compile beyond the Linux from scratch within the troot environment I'd say much like we did in chapter 6 and that, that can be done, I've done it once before um, but uh, this time doing Linux from scratch I've got quite a few errors which I can only put down to the fact that we're in a, a troot environment um, and we had to go back and rebuild and retest those packages that were failing so I don't know if it's the testing that was failing or the packages were indeed being built incorrectly and the tests were doing their job and showing up the fact that the packages were being built incorrectly um, so that's the first two options the next option the last option is to again boot into our native Linux from scratch, get the prompt up and use just a few of the basic tools that do exist in Linux from scratch to build up the Beyond Linux from scratch 9.1 system from those basic tools. So the problems are here, it is a compromise between the first two options um, but one good thing is that we can guarantee that any test failures are not inf an influence from any out outside influence. So either that we're in the Chroot or it's come from the host system that we've Chrooted from. Um, yes, there will be some manual entry, some manual commands we need to do, but at least we minimized um, because what I'm going to propose, uh, the way of doing this, is that we'll only need to install a few packages manually and the rest we should be able to do with a sort of copy and paste technique. So I'm going to go, as I say, down with using option three, which is the last option I just showed you, and just present some more problems that we need to get around by taking this option. So we need to be able to browse the book online, as it says there. We need we need the instructions. We need to be able to see what we're doing and what commands we need to type. Uh, we need to enter. And ideally, we need a way to copy and paste the commands in the console. So there are two packages that will sort out both these problems, and they are in the BLFS book, which is lucky. So the first one is GPM. Uh, it stands for General Purpose Mouse Demon, I think it is. Um, and that's a um, utility that gives us a text-based mouse. So we get a block coming up, which represents the cursor, and we can use mouse as you would do if we're in a GUI where we can highlight portions of text and paste them with the right click of the mouse so that that's going to be how we can copy and paste text into the console and secondly we need a browser well there are there's a couple of um, at least a couple of text-based web browsers by preferences links lynx there's another one called links spelt l-i-n-k-s um, which I've used, I don't quite like as much as links, but obviously if you want to use the other one, L-I-N-K-S, you're quite welcome to. But 
there is a paradox. We need GPM to copy and paste commands, but we don't have GPM installed yet. So, as I said previously, we'll have to type in a few commands for the first few packages just to get GPM installed and the browser installed and so on. So we've actually got a utility to copy and paste from and we've got a utility to browse the internet from. So it's just a, a little bit of manual stuff initially. Once we get past that, we're, we're okay for doing copy and pasting within the um, text text-based console. There's one more problem that we need to resolve. How do we download the source packages? Well, in the INET util package that was installed during Linux from scratch 9.1, there's a program called FTP, which we can use to download packages from FTP servers. Now there's a slight gotcha here as well with this. We can only download from FTP servers, so we can't it's basically it's the FTP protocol for connecting to the internet. We can't download from anywhere that begins HTTP or HTTPS. So we're going to have to work around that because only some of the links in the Beyond the Linux from Scratch book have got FTP addresses. So we're going to have to restrict ourselves to those addresses. And if there aren't addresses for, sorry, if there aren't FTP addresses for the um, packages we need to build, we're going to have to try and work around that, but it, it's it's okay, there is a way around using FTP. So once GPM and links are installed, the next objective will be to get a basic GUI up um, and then also a GUI browser so that we're in a bit more familiar territory where it's all graphical, much easier to use and a text console is. Um, the GUI obviously is based around Xorg, um, and we'll be installing some uh, window managers and desktop managers and so on to, um, to help manage getting into that. Um, uh, it's funny because you think, oh, we'll just get a basic um, GUI up and then we'll get a browser up. You think, well, oh, that's not going to be too much work. That's quite basic stuff. But there's a lot of libraries that need to be installed. Xorg itself is just full of little modules. Um, so there's lots of work. It will take many hours. You know, I'm not sure how many hours it take. It could be in the range of maybe 10 to 15 hours of sitting at the terminal, at the text terminal, to get to that point. But it's it's worth the effort. Um, once you get it all up and running, it's quite a sense sense of achievement getting it running. And it's the foundation for moving on to the more advanced stuff. You know, like having KDE installed or or LibreOffice and so on. So it's um, it's worth getting to this point. Um, but it's worth bearing in mind at this point that the PC will still only have a basic desktop with a system with a with a browser. It's still going to be quite basic, even after all that that work we've put in. But as I say, it's it's worth doing. And then once we've got to that point, the rest of building beyond the Linux from scratch is just, as I say, picking what applications you want to install and working through the instructions. It's um, the fact that we've got a GUI and a browser, things are made a little bit easier at that point. Um, it's not not so not so difficult to to work with installing further packages, and as we install more, things get easier anyway. So it's just you know it's it's quite good, I suppose, to see you going from virtually nothing and just building uh, something. I suppose it's like starting with a car. If you were building a car, you'd start off with a a metal chassis, for example, you build the bodywork up, and then you might put an engine in, and and the gearbox, and the the final transmission, and so on, and then you might wire it up electrically, and then you do all the nice stuff like the upholstery and the electrics, and so on, and it's a bit like that, really. So there's some rules that I stick to when I'm um, building Beyond Linux from scratch, um, just to help me. Um, with dependencies because you might decide oh, I don't need a dependency or I don't want to install that and later on you realize that you do need to have a dependency and that means building that dependency and then rebuilding the package that requires that dependency if it's an optional or a, a recommended depend dependency. So what I do is I have these rules. I pick an application that I want to build 
and obviously I've got the build the required dependencies because it obviously won't build or it might not work without the required dependencies. Then I'll go on and compile all the recommended and all the optional dependencies. Now this makes it quite onerous because it's, there's obviously a lot more and if you imagine a tree where you start off at the top and that needs say three packages and each of those packages might need three or four or five packages you can quickly see that you get to be building maybe 20 or 30 packages all for one application um, so not only does it uh, become onerous you have to keep track of what you've built what you want to build and so on um, and also there's obviously all the time involved in downloading and comp building and compiling those packages but I've found it is this does seem to be the best way of doing it and maybe very rarely you have to reinstall one of the packages because another package that's not directly dependent on the package you're building and installing has found this new one that you've got installed and it works or behaves slightly differently so it, it's probably best if, if you want to get less heartache if you like to, to do this to build the package with its dependencies, with its recommended dependencies and its optional dependencies. The only exception to the, that rule is that there's no other compelling reason not to build. So um, either there's conflict, you know, if I, I install this package, package A, it would conflict with package B and I really wanted package B more than I wanted package A um, or for some other reason. But if for example, if it's not in the BLFS book. So as long as those recommended and optional pack packages are in the BLFS book, I'll build them. Or if there's some other significant reason not to build it. Um, but basically everything that's available is what I'll build. So just wrap up with some tips on the going through Beyond the Linux from scratch. Take your time. It, it, it's going to take a lot of time, but don't try and rush any of it. As I'd say the same for... Linux from scratch actually it's um, just take your time read the instructions for each package carefully at least once before you start entering commands just get acquainted with what's going to be coming up to build that package and lastly as I've already mentioned keep a record of which packages you've already installed and any dependencies, dependencies which you need to install so just so you don't miss anything out and you come to build something and it says you know the build fails and sometimes you get a nice message saying, I need this library. And I, oh, yeah, you forgot. I forgot to install that library. Other times you'll get um, some obscure message and it's not until you start searching on the internet. It says, oh, you need need to install this library. And you realize that, yeah, you forgot to install it or you thought you'd install it. Um, and you didn't. So they're just things to bear in mind. So with that in mind, uh, the next video I'll, I'll be booting up Linux from scratch and um, starting to make some changes and we'll be on, on, our road, on the road to building up our Beyond Linux from scratch system.